Uh, it's always worth looking at a country, though, coming out of financial crisis through the eyes uh, of an immigrant. It tells us a, a lot. And Ryan Wardman is with me. He's 29 and from the north of England. Ryan, you've been working here for three years now. Are there still jobs for immigrants in Iceland, even after the financial crisis? Uh, there are a few jobs, yes. Not as many, obviously, as there were before. Um, a lot of professionals have moved to different countries, and uh, I think every flight to some of the other countries that had people working here was fully booked for months. Um, but there are still jobs, if you're willing to look for them. <laughs> And you work in a hotel. I heard an anecdote from uh, an Icelandic economist who said that at the height of the financial boom, he was at a hotel in Iceland. There was one old Icelandic couple that didn't speak Icelandic, and he had to intervene and help them because not one of the staff of the hotel spoke the language. Um, yeah, there's been uh, a few problems with that, with people assimilating themselves into a lifestyle here. The language is very difficult to learn. Uh, it's taken me uh, a couple of years to become reasonably fluent. Um, it's caused some problems, some friction, um, because Icelandic people are very proud of their uh, heritage and very proud of their language as well they should be. Um, but um, I think people now are making much more of an effort to learn the language and you know, assimilate themselves into the culture here. And Ryan, you're here paying the eye-watering taxes, 50% on the price of petrol, for example, food also very expensive. Joining in that, that solidarity that many Icelanders talk of, of being in this together, having to pay back the country's debt and the, the debt forgiveness for Icelanders who've amassed a lot of personal debts as well, taking out large mortgages or loans in foreign currency. So that's the attitude here, very much pulling together and putting a brave face on it.